Welcome back. Please like, subscribe, and share this video on other platforms. And also be sure to click the bell for notifications. You'll be notified when I upload new videos. Okay, this is part eight of JFK Jr.'s George Magazine, February 1997 edition, A Survival Guide to the Future. In this video, I'll be reading the second of three articles regarding the future crisis, Social Security. We collectively closed our eyes as America was turned inside out. Hope I die before I get old, sang the Who in the mid-1960s. The generation that was listening, 76 million American baby boomers, born 1946 to 1964, had identified so strongly with its own youthfulness that its members literally couldn't imagine themselves growing old. You can see them working out feverishly in the gyms, straining to fend off old age, but it is nearly upon them, and their neglect of financial preparedness is more evident than any love handles. In terms of building a nest egg, many boomers have let things slide. It just might be that all their earlier love-ins, disco nights, and plop-plop fizz-fizz mornings should be considered blocks of borrowed time from their eventual retirement. Ask the typical boomer about his or her retirement plans and you'll enter a world of cognitive dissonance between expectation and reality. In the realm of expectations, most boomers hope to retire early, well before 65. In retirement, they assume they will live as well as they are now living, or even better. They see their parents opting for the golf-centered community earlier than the generation before. So apparently, boomers expect an even earlier and expanded set of golden years. They could not be more wrong. Their parents retired well because they did it the old-fashioned way. They saved and invested more. Somewhere along the line, however, we got carried away and started saving too little, entitling ourselves to too much and borrowing instead of saving. My generation was a willing co-conspirator and has nearly as much to do with the mess we are in now as boomers and others do. We collectively closed our eyes as America was turned inside out. As the boomers approach retirement, however, the bill for all this will come due. To them, as well as to generations X and Y, retirement will never be the same as a result. Here's why the legs on the boomers' rocking chairs won't be sturdy enough to support them in their post-employment existence. Leg 1. Public Retirement Programs, Social Security and Medicare. In total, we have promised that today's adults, workers and retirees, will receive $17 trillion more than they are scheduled to pay into the system in their lifetimes. To balance the books, payroll taxes must go up, somewhere between 35 and 55% of total payroll, in order to cover the cost of big promises. But such tax burdens on generations X and Y, on top of federal and state tax burdens, would be economically, politically, and morally unsustainable. Like two, retirement age. The longer you work, the less savings you need to support yourself in retirement, and the more time you have to do some savings of your own. Clearly, the Social Security and Medicare eligibility ages are going to have to go up, gradually to 70, I believe, with the appropriate exceptions for those physically unable to continue working. Precisely because boomers will be healthier longer, many will want to work well past 65 if we make it acceptable and fulfilling for them to do so. That means changing attitudes and policies to overcome the ageism bias in the workplace. The prevalent view that seniors don't need to work, don't want to work, and aren't able to work is wrong on all accounts. Leg 3. Individual private savings. Most boomers in their 40s have virtually nothing except, possibly, some equity in their homes. In fact, even among workers in their late 50s and early 60s who are nearing retirement, median net financial assets are only a shockingly low $12,000. It seems that while Americans like to assume they'll live forever, when it comes to their own personal financial preparation, they must be assuming they will die six months after retirement. The blunt reality is that if one assumes likely cuts in Social Security and Medicare benefits, boomers will have to quintuple their current savings rates to maintain current living standards in retirement. Every American generation needs to overcome a culture that shouts consume and replace it with an ethic that stresses thrift helped along by a new tax system that would encourage savings and investment, not merely spending and borrowing. Leg four, private pension plans. 
only half of American workers have one, and younger workers today are less likely to have one than older workers were at the same age. And many workers who have a private pension may be disappointed with how little these plans may actually yield in retirement. Given America's passion for consumption, I have reluctantly concluded that if we are to get a big enough bump in private savings, we Americans probably need to be forced to save through a mandated system of fully funded private portable and vested pension accounts. It's okay for people to be in denial about aging when, say, it comes to their choice of clothes. It's catastrophic for a society when it comes to the next generation's economic welfare. We cannot give up the chance to make modest reforms early, such as increasing the retirement age and reducing benefits to affluent retirees. If we wait until it's too late, we'll be forced to make sudden and harsh changes that will hurt every age group including the elderly and the poor. Come on, boomers, all that youthful indulgence will have to mean some extra laps in the rat race. Interesting stuff, right? What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks again for watching. May God bless you and your families.